The other thing we want to consider when looking at this research is we're measuring two metrics, right? Well, I guess maybe three. So we're looking at weight, we're looking at blood sugar, and we're looking at A1C. But we really haven't looked at a lot of other markers of health, such as blood pressure, lipids, um, things of that nature. And what we unfortunately have found, and I will say that the data is a little mixed on this. This seems to be that one study will show one thing and another study will show another. But I will say there does appear to be a pretty consistent trend that when we find that maybe, yes, we lower weight, so people lose weight very quickly. We find that those who have issues with blood sugar, so things like diabetes and pre-diabetes, et cetera, their blood sugar is under better control. That said, that comes at a cost. So as I mentioned, we have, you know, Keto is a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. So I think it's really important to notice that like in the research, these people are being fed low carb, but high fat. That is not necessarily how most people practice the ketogenic diet, but in order to get into that true state of ketosis. So that state where the ketone bodies are being produced, you have to have both that low carbohydrate and high fat component. Um, otherwise you're just eating a low carb diet, which is not related to any of this. Um, you may still lose weight on it because you're, you're reducing your calories, but you're not getting into that state of ketosis, which is supposedly the magic behind all of this, this ketogenic nonsense. Um, but the research diets are low in carbohydrate and high in fat. And because they're high in fat, what we see is actually an increase in that LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. Now, what we do know about LDL cholesterol is that there is likely a genetic component to it. So putting anybody on a high fat diet, even for a short period of time may not raise it significantly, but for people who are prone to that, it does. Um, so, you know, anyone who has a history of, you know, heart disease, high cholesterol, things like that in their family this is definitely a kind of a dangerous diet because you're putting yourself while you maybe are lowering your blood sugar, you're increasing your risk for heart disease, which is arguably just as bad, if not worse. Um, so that's a pretty consistent trend that we see. Um, another thing that we see, and this was actually a study that I found, um, it was published in 2020 and it was done in rats. So I will say that it was done in rats and it was done in a small number of rats. So I want to be clear again, what I mentioned in both my, um, intermittent fasting video, as well as the video that came after that one, which is kind of like how to do your own research and how to evaluate your own research. I talked about the importance of having a high number of participants and studies in order to draw conclusions. And again, with these keto studies, the same as with the intermittent fasting studies, there is some of these studies are very small in terms of the number of people. I will say there's probably more research done, at least in humans, than there is in intermittent fasting with larger numbers, um, but still some some of it's kind of small. Um, and, and even some of the animal studies like this one is, is small too, but I think it, it's a really interesting study and it kind of points to some things that not a lot of other people have, have looked at. Uh, I'm sorry. Those of you who are watching this Simba just jumped in my lap. So you may see a cattail. Um, obviously I've learned that it is easier to just let him do his thing than, than to try to fight it. Um, but anyway, what they found the study that was published in 2020, um, they did a small number of rats. So it seems to be a very small pilot study, but it's definitely concerning and it, and it warrants further investigation. So what they found is they fed rats, they fed one group of rats, a regular diet, and they fed one group of rats, a ketogenic diet, and they did it for 60 days. So this is still only two months, but what they found is very alarming. Uh, they found that per, as they expected, they saw a, a decrease in weight. So the rats on the keto diet lost a lot of weight. They saw a decrease in fasting blood sugar, as well as a one C. So they saw those two blood sugar markers were, went down, which is what we see in humans as well. Um, and they also saw an increase in ketones and blood ketones, which again, that's the whole point, right? Is that your body is by not feeding your body carbohydrates and giving it mostly fat as its fuel source, you're going to force that trip into ketogenesis, which is creating those ketone bodies. So that's what we see in, um, that's what we see in humans. It's also what we saw in these rats. So all of that checks out consistent with past research. Um, they didn't, they actually didn't see a change in cholesterol or blood markers or blood lipids, which is interesting. But again, we're dealing with rats, not humans. So maybe that's, and it also was a very short study. It was only two months as opposed to the typical three or six. Um, so it's possible that we just didn't have enough time for that. Um, 
The other thing that they saw, which this is the alarming part, is they saw a decrease in both red blood cells and hemoglobin to the point of anemia in the ketogenic rats. They also saw um, metabolic acidosis. So the blood pH in the ketogenic rats actually dropped. Um, and that is likely due to the increase in, in ketone production. So ketones, while they are an alternative fuel source for your brain, they are acidic. So basically what that does is it create, it makes your blood more acidic because this acidic molecule is circulating in it. Um, that can be very dangerous. <laughs> um, your kidneys are the ones responsible for regulating your blood pH. So the blood pH dropped, but it did not drop to a, a critical level. Um, and they also checked liver and kidney function and those both panned out fine. But I want to point out this was in two months right? So in two months, we already saw a drop in blood pH. Um, that's a condition called metabolic acidosis, and it can be very, very dangerous. So right now these rats, their kidneys, is, they're humming along. Okay. Regulating it. It's not great, but it's okay. But it would be very concerning to see what would happen if this continued, right? Because basically this points to the fact that ketosis is very much a starvation backup mechanism. It is not how your body is meant to operate. It's what your body has adapted to be able to do in times when food, particularly starch was not readily available, right? So I, I say this all the time on this podcast, but your body was not designed to lose weight. Your body was not designed to be thin. Your body was designed to survive. And part of that survival means adapting to your surroundings. So we as humans now, for the most part, have pretty well unlimited access to food. That said, over the millennia of our existence, we did not, <laughs> right? We did not have regular access to food. If anything, we had very much the opposite. We had lots of intermittent access, periods of feast and famine. And then we kind of had to roll with the season. So the foods that we had access to, we may not have had access to during another season of, of the year. So, so your body adapts these these backup mechanisms to deal with it. Um, but they're not great. They put a strain on your body and they're definitely not ideal as this rat study showed. So even though it is, it's a small number, it was only done over a period of two months. To me, that two month period is actually more alarming because that's a big change in a short window of time. Um, and I'm sure that one of the, the things that they said, um, right out of the gate was just, you know, this warrants further study. We don't want to do it in humans because we have now good data to suggest that it might be dangerous, but, you know, kind of doing an even longer study in rats to see what happens. Um, you know, and, and then if it's appropriate doing it in humans as well, but, um, it, it definitely kind of leads to the, to the suggestion that, that it could be problematic. Um, and then, so, you know, that's definitely something to, to consider. Um, it, it's definitely really problematic to me. That's scary. Um, that for me is enough to, to, to warrant anyone not, um, not following a ketogenic diet. Um, mostly, mostly because I don't see a benefit. I truly outside of, you know, kids with epilepsy, there is just no clinical data that suggests that the ketogenic diet works any better than any other diet to produce weight loss. There just isn't. Um, it doesn't produce rapid weight loss very quickly. Yeah, it does. But is that, does that mean it's healthy? No, like there are lots of ways that I can make you lose weight very, very quickly. And I would lose my license for every single one of them because they're not ethical and they're not safe. Um, just because you're losing weight doesn't mean it's a good thing. And I think that is something that diet culture and part of why the diet industry has latched onto this so much. It's like, oh, this makes people lose weight. And according to diet culture, that's the only thing that matters when the reality is any health professional worth their salt is going to tell you, no, weight loss is not the only thing that matters. You know, these blood values that we're talking about matter a whole heck of a lot. And, you know, like I said, the, the initial data and in people with diabetes, when we were looking at just blood sugar looked really promising, but as we take a deeper dive and look at things like blood lipids, now anemia, metabolic acidosis, you know, yeah, the blood sugar comes down, but at what cost are we damaging internal organs? You know, are are, are we setting up bodily systems for, for failure, renal failure, liver failure, things like that? We don't have answers to those yet, but we have some warning signs that it may not be the best. Um, so I definitely always urge people to practice extreme caution uh, when considering a ketogenic diet. 
Um, and in fact, a, a review done by O'Neill and Raggy in uh, again in 2020, um, you know, kind of kind of summed that up is that you know they're other diets are just as effective as a ketogenic diet in terms of producing weight loss. And they're a lot safer. Um, so I think that just kind of says it all. Um, that was, that was a study published in the new England journal of medicine, which is a, a pretty robust publication. Um, so that's kind of my, my two cents on it. Um, again, the diet industry has really latched onto this in ways that are, in, in my opinion, unethical, um, not necessarily unsafe, but, but definitely unethical. Um, so lots of supplements now are out there, you know, posing, you know, saying that they're ketones and, and things like that, because ketone is a buzzword now that people recognize, you know, we know that, okay, the ketogenic diet, you, you know, low carb, high fat, your body has to produce ketones. It puts you in a state of ketosis. People kind of have these like keto type words buzzing around in their head. Um, and a lot of kind of what we think, you know, is kind of the key to these metabolic changes is that ketone production. So a lot of what we think is the reason why the blood sugar drops and the reason why the A1C drops and things like that is because we're producing ketones. Um, so to that end, the diet industry is like, well, let's like make things that are you know going to increase that ketone level. Um, you cannot increase your ketone level by consuming anything. I'm going to be like flat out hard stop cannot do it. The only way to increase your ketone level, if that is something you wanted to do, which I would argue it's not, but if it is something you wanted to do, the only way to increase your level of ketones is to eat a low carb, high fat diet for a period of three days or more. That's it. There is no supplement that is going to be, that's going to give you extra ketones. There's going to be no supplement that's going to make you more inclined to produce more ketones of your own. That is something that your metabolism is going to do all on its own only if you feed it a low carbohydrate, high, high fat diet for a period of at least three. And in some cases, like up to seven days. Um, so I think that that is, again, that's just the diet industry lying to you flat out. That's all it is. Um, and, and trying to make money off of a buzzword that people are, that is popularized right now. Um, so definitely don't waste your time or your money <laughs> on, on those types of, of supplements. They're not going to do anything for you. Most of them that I've read the, the ingredients on, they're just sugar alcohols. That's all it is. Um, it's, it's not a ketone. It's not the, anything your body's ever going to turn into a ketone. It's not the, something that promotes ketone production. It's just something your body can't digest. And then you poop it back out. Like that's all it is. Um, so definitely don't waste your time on those. And, and honestly, in my opinion, the, the keto diet is just, it's not safe. It's not sustainable. You, you really can't follow it for a long period of time. Um, we definitely have evidence now to suggest that maybe you shouldn't follow it for a long period of time. Um, you know, quality of life markers and things like that, that people, you know, just it's, it's not great. Um, even at the three month mark. And like I said, we have really no data beyond six months, even a year, um, of, of a diet like this and anything that you're trying to manage, um, with a diet like this, like diabetes, it's not going to go away. Um, it's not going to go away in a year. It's certainly not going to go away in three months. Um, you know, it's, you need an approach to managing it that that's going to last as long as the disease does. Um, and even weight loss, you know, if, if we're trying to lose weight, we, you know, one weight is not the only metric of health, but even if that is your goal, we want to lose fat specifically. And fat just takes time. It takes time and it takes being well nourished in order to target that fat loss. Um, so, you know, a lot, again, a lot of these like rapid weight loss diets make it appear as though you lose your weight and then you go back to living your life. And what really happens is you lose the weight, you go off the diet and then you gain all the way back usually. And then some, um, which we have a significant amount of evidence now that suggests that, sorry, there's some thunder going on outside. <laughs> you can hear that. We have a significant amount of evidence now that let that up down that yo-yo diet effect is actually much more damaging than being overweight in the first place. Um, so something to kind of consider again, as you're evaluating these diets and kind of evaluating your approach, my solution is always going to be to a, you know, slow, gradual weight loss that, you know, is one to two pounds per week. That's what really is ideal for fat loss is going to keep you nourished is going to keep your body healthy and well-maintained. Um, so with that, I leave you to make your own decisions. Um, but I hope that you have found this informative. I will post all of my references in the, um, the comment section. If you have questions about it, please let me know. I'm happy to, um, 
to, to answer any questions kind of further to discussion. But um, other than that, I hope you eat your carbs and have a great rest of your day.